Hello and welcome to the Car Care channel. In today's video, we're going to continue on our series on how Toyota hybrids work. In this video, we're going to be talking about the hybrid transmission. Is it a CVT or is it not? Hold that thought for a second. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching my videos. And without further ado, let's find out if this is really a CVT or not. So let's talk about the hybrid transmission. Now, unfortunately, I can't really pull the transmission apart out of this car and uh, tear it apart and show you how everything works, like the battery. Uh, it's a little bit more involved and I think the peop nice people that lent me this car will never do that again if I do that. So I'm going to try to explain it in the best way possible. Again, following the theme of the series, simple but complicated, but we're going to focus on the simple part. So is it a CVT transmission? Yes and no. Let me elaborate real quick. It is not a CVT transmission in the conventional sense like a 14 plus Corolla. It does not have a belt, does not have the cones. It, it simply is not. Toyota calls it eCVT. And the reason they do that is because the functioning theory behind it is the same theory as a CVT, but does it function like a CVT transmission? It does not. And let me explain how it actually functions and what's inside of this big old, very expensive transmission. Actually, What's inside this transmission is rather simple. There is two electric motors. They're called MG1 and MG2. MG1, MG stands for motor generator. And this goes back to the basics of motors. If you apply power to a motor, it spins. If you spin the motor manually, it's gonna generate. So that's why it's a motor and it's also a generator at the same time. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, other than MG1 and MG2, which are two big old motors inside the transmission, there is a bunch of shafts and there's something called the planetary. I'm not gonna get too much into how the planetary works because we could be here for a few days and in the end, we gain nothing. Well, you can research on the planetary if you're very interested in it, but for the sake of keeping this simple, we're gonna skip that. It's a big component that ties everything up. Let's keep it this simple. There's also a few other shafts and a final drive. There's also an oil pump. And uh, that pretty much sums up the major components inside the transmission. You notice there is no valve body, there's no hydraulic circuit, there's no torque converter, none of that stuff, no clutches, nothing. None of that exists inside a hybrid transmission, which makes it effectively not a CVT. There's no belt, there's no cones, there's no chain, there's nothing. There's very little actually moving part inside that transmission. There's no hydraulic circuit, there's no clutches that wear out, nothing. So let's talk about how it actually works. You start your car, we've seen what happens to the battery, and we've seen how the power gets to the inverter, all that fancy stuff. But let's talk about what actually happens when you start driving. So MG1, which is the smaller motor out of these two, is connected to the engine at all times. MG2, which is the bigger guy, which is like the, the muscle of the operation, if you would, it is connected to the wheels indirectly. But again, we're keeping things simple here. Just picture this with me. So the engine does not have a starter. MG1 being connected to the engine when the computer decides to apply power to MG1, it's gonna spin, and because it's connected to the engine, it's gonna spin the engine and start it up. That's why when hybrids start, they just come to life because it's a quiet electric motor that turns it on, not a loud starter. So now the engine, we know how the engine starts. Let's go, MG1 does not drive the wheels. MG2 does though. And here's the cool thing, let's say, you're driving normally, the high voltage battery is fully charged. We don't need to turn on the engine. Well, the high voltage battery is gonna be, the high voltage from the battery is gonna be sent to MG2, which is the big guy, which is connected to the wheels. 
is going to drive the car. As you drive, the high voltage battery comes down. Now it needs to charge the battery. It's going to turn on the engine. It's, when you turn on the engine, you spun MG2. You applied power to it. Now the engine is running. When the engine starts running, it is automatically turning MG1. Now MG1, the small guy that's connected to the engine, now it is generating, because remember when you turn a motor, it generates. This guy now is charging the battery, and now the force of the engine is going through the planetary, and it's also helping drive. Now if you put your foot down, at any given point, even when the battery is charged and it needs more power, it's gonna turn on the engine. Here, here's the frenzy that it's gonna do. It's gonna turn on the engine using MG1. It's gonna power it up real quick. It's gonna start charging the battery and the battery at the same time that it's getting charged, sending power to MG2. Now you got a boost from there. And then the engine is running at high RPM. It's going through the planetary and it's also supplying power. And that's how you go into full power mode. The minute you let go of the gas, here's what hybrids do immediately. It, 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 it happens in a split, everything happens in a split second. This is how quick these computers are. It's gonna shut off the engine. MG1 effectively stops. As soon as the engine shuts off, MG1 stops. Now, because MG2, the big guy, remember we said it's connected to the wheels. Now the wheels are turning by the force of the road. So now MG2, is getting turned by the wheels as they're turning. So now it effectively turns it into a generator. So now it's generating, being a bigger motor is gonna generate a lot and it's gonna start charging the battery. And now when you push the brakes down, and we're gonna cover brakes a little bit in the, fu in the future episode, but when you push the brakes down, it's actually not gonna use the hydraulic brakes. It's gonna continue, it's gonna, basically increase the load on MG2 and that's going to slow the car down and the more it, it puts load on MG2 the faster the more it's going to start charging the battery which is a genius idea it sounds pretty simple but the engineers that made this they deserve a huge shout out they are very smart and god bless them because when they made this design they were the laughing stock of the automotive industry back in 2000 when the first Prius came out. But now they are the leaders of this technology and huge shout out to them. They are geniuses. This simple design is really very reliable and it's very smart and it's super efficient. I mean, you're always harvesting energy. You're using it and, and and recuperating it back, back and forth, back and forth. That's what makes hybrids extremely efficient and very clever, but it also makes them very complicated for people to understand. I hope this small demonstration shows you how things work in a simple term. Basically, you have two motors. One is only done, uses, is used for charging and starting the engine. And the other one is used to drive the car and then harvest the energy when you're slowing down. That's the basic idea. The oil pump is not a big oil pump like a conventional automatic transmission. It is essentially a oil slinging pump. It just takes the oil from the bottom, throws it up. That's all it does. All it's doing is lubricating the various gears and the planetary that's in between the two motors. That's all it does. It doesn't really do anything else. It's a low pressure pump. That's why they really don't have much leaks either. Another small component that is that you might hear about, instead of the torque converter, which is typically in a conventional automatic transmission that sits between the engine and the transmission, there is a small dampener, and that dampener kind of dampens the start of the engine, that jerk that you hear when the engine starts. One thing I will note about that though, and most hybrid owners wonder about this one, when the engine misfires or you have a bad problem with the engine, the engine is not running right, most hybrid owners will report a huge clattering sound. It feels like my engine is going to blow up. Well, actually, what's making that sound is not the engine, it's the transmission. The transmission, because the engine is connected to MG1 and then it goes into that planetary, that planetary is a series of gears that have slight play in between them. When the engine is not running right, 
it's misfiring and it's shaking. It actually starts shaking that planetary inside the transmission. And that's a clattering noise you hear. It's actually from the transmission, not from the engine. So I thought I'd add this one here so it would make sense why they clatter like that. But again, it's a very simple design yet very complicated. There is a lot more to it, how the planetary works. There's sensors and temperature sensors and all kinds of other stuff that are part of the motors. But to keep things simple, this is how the basic operation of the transmission, they're hugely reliable. The fluid, that's why I always tell viewers that ask, hey, should I replace my fluid on this transmission? Don't worry too much about it. Do replace it. It's not, I'm not saying don't, but don't be in a rush to replace it because there's not much burning the fluid and filling it up with clutch material and there's no sensitive hydraulic circuit that gets clogged and causes issues like a normal automatic transmission. I just change it every 60, 90,000 miles. Get it changed. Remember, never use CVT transmission fluid. I've already had a viewer ask me about this and another viewer that actually used it. Never do that. Why do, does Toyota call it an eCVT? Well, it's very simple. Because of the way the planetary is set up and how it's gonna use the power of the engine and it's gonna vary the ratios, they called it that, but not because it's a CVT. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission. And that's essentially what this is. It doesn't have uh, stationary gears, one, first gear, second gear, third gear. It's continuously varying between the gears. And that's all it means. But how it does that is completely different than your standard automatic CVT, let's say in 14 plus Corolla or in some other makes and models that uh, didn't get it very bright like the Corolla did. Anyways, I hope this gives you an idea. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching this video. May the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day.